This week's episode of Create Consumer Repeat, production value is through the roof. We have a Christmas tree, Christmas lights, holiday drunkenness, and a projector just so we can revisit the internet's favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. So sit back. Come on to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. Released in 1988 on the heels of an era of action movies like Rambo and The Terminator, Die Hard would revolutionize the action film genre in many, many ways. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Loosely based on the novel Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe and adapted to the screen by Jeb Stewart, then script doctored by Steven D'Souza, Die Hard is that rare movie that proves unconventional thinking can revolutionize a genre. Directed by legendary filmmaker John McTiernan, the man that gave us action film classics like Predator, the spiritual sequel to E.T., if E.T. grew up to become a big game hunter searching for his long lost friend Elliot back on Earth. Hunt for Red October, every voice coach's existential nightmare. Verify our range to target. And 13th Warrior, a kick-ass Viking film that proves you don't need Rosetta Stone to learn a language overnight, as long as you're Antonio Banderas. Die Hard stars Corbin Dallas from Fifth Element, Bada boom. Professor Snape from Harry Potter, the dad on Family Matters, I was in Die Hard, damn it! Fuck Steve Urkel! And that obnoxious dick from Ghostbusters we all love to hate. Yes, that obnoxious dick. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick. All jokes aside though, this is where Die Hard really breaks from convention. Up until this point, the action genre was littered with the muscled bodies of Arnold, Sylvester, and Jean-Claude. But Bruce Willis's John McClane embodied something new and special. A regular New York City cop in the body of an average Joe. The everyman action hero with relatable problems like his fear of flying, a failing marriage, and emotional vulnerability never seen in the genre before. Tell her that, um, that she's the best thing that ever happened to a bum like me. And if you're still not convinced, well that scene is responsible for him being cast as James Cole in 12 Monkeys by visionary director Terry Gilliam. We talked about this scene in the first Die Hard that intrigued me, uh, and it's a scene where he's got his, his feet full of uh, glass and he's in the, the toilet of this building and he's on the phone to his wife and he's crying when he's talking to her and he said that was his idea to cry, it wasn't in the script and I thought, ah, there's more going on here than uh, the world uh, thinks. Now any serious look at Die Hard needs to take into account the inspired cinematography by Jean de Bont, who would also break from Hollywood convention by employing an energetic, proactive, participatory camera. Think handheld shots and taking advantage of the building's architecture and natural lighting conditions. I like handheld cameras. I like cameras on the little chip arm. I like cameras on, on everything, but I hate it when those dolly moves are really smooth and nobody walks like that. Nobody sees it like that. And it also, it dampens the speed and energy of the scene dramatically if you, if that is all under, under control. Hell, Dubon even partially used the famous planner T.7 lenses Kubrick used to film Barry Lyndon's candlelit scenes. When Stanley read in the American Cinematographer about a lens that NASA used and was made by Zeiss, he was incredibly excited. This very, very fast lens allowed him to actually do this, to light a set with candlelight. All these choices would create an original look that felt genuine and visceral and like nothing before it. Now, I know that many watching will think the next statement is heretical, but Quentin Tarantino often gets a ton of credit for his eclectic and varied blend of music that bounces from Ennio Morricone to the RZA in Kill Bill, for example. But I, yes, I, I will argue that McTiernan's Die Hard is often overlooked in this category. How many films do you know blend Beethoven's Ode to Joy, Run DMC's Christmas in Hollis, and Michael Kamen's nerve-pounding score so seamlessly? Please, if you think of one, tell me all about it in the comment section below. I'll wait. With all that said, I have yet to mention the action that oozes a kinetic, 
energy only seen in films by John Frankenheimer. I even think this film deeply inspired the Hong Kong bullet ballets of John Woo. Cue those goddamn doves. Sure, I can spend all night dropping inane diehard trivia like the fact that yippee ki motherfucker was born from Willis and the Souza's mutual love for old westerns. Alan Rickman wasn't acting in the fall off the roof since he was actually dropped by accident in that take. Or William Atherton's ad-libbing Tell me you got that. I got it, I got it. Or my favorite, Die Hard is a love story not just about John and Holly, but about John and Sergeant Powell. I could go on and on, but I've got gifts to unwrap and eggnog to drink. So please don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And as always, let me know what you think in the comments section below. And if you want bonus points, hit that bell so an angel gets his wings and you can be notified when I drop a new episode. Happy holidays and thanks for making 2019 such an amazing year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Catch you guys next year. Peace.